Good day folks, this is an update video to some videos I made a couple weeks ago about drive support in LumaFusion. Yesterday the folks at LumaFusion released an update, they brought it to version 2.1. It added a lot of new enhancements and new features. In this video we're going to focus mainly on the new drive integration right into the LumaFusion interface. So let's just jump right in and take a look. So if you watch my other video about importing footage from an external drive into LumaFusion, I did mention in there that there probably was an update coming where they would integrate it, and sure enough that came yesterday. They've really made things a lot more streamlined and easier to access your content. Before you had to kind of import it into your library first, and there was a lot of extra steps. Now you can add folders within your drive right to your library, and you can access them anytime very easily. So I've already added an external drive to my library, my SanDisk there. So we're going to go in and take a look at how it works, and then afterwards I'll go in and show you how to add other external drives. So I've just got a blank project open here. Uh, let's click on our library button up at the top there. You can see here we have a new files icon. That's where we're going to be adding all our external drives. And not only can we just add external drives now, but you can add any folder within your files app. Let's just go in now and we'll take a look at it. So we're going to click on our library and we're going to click on the new files icon. As you can see here, I have a folder called video. That folder is a folder that I have on this external drive here. So we can go into it and you can see it's going to show us all our media. We can click on any one of the files. We can scrub through, we can play the footage and we can drag it down to our timeline. Now what you're going to notice here, it has to download it first. That's what that little icon on the right hand side there is. When I dragged that file to my timeline, it downloaded the file from this external drive to the LumaFusion folder within the Files app. So say we're going to add another clip now, but we go in and we crop it. We just want a small segment like that. You can see here, we'll drag it down. You can see there it's downloading, but what it does, it has to download the entire clip. Now, unlike the Narbox 2.0, when you import video files from something like an external drive, it has to copy the entire file over. With the Narbox 2.0, it's just going to copy that little segment over. That's the difference between using something like a Narbox and just an external drive. The Narbox has a built-in computer that can actually process that, but it also comes at a very large price tag. And for the most part, for most people just using uh, an external drive like this is more than sufficient for what they need to do. So if we go back to the main library files location now and I unplug the drive, you can see that all the structure remains the same. We don't have to add it every time. If we try to go into a folder, it's going to give us a message that the drive is unplugged and to plug it in. If I plug the external drive back in, you can see I can now go into that folder location. So now I'm going to show you how to add another drive location. I've got the Samsung T5 here. This is another SSD drive. We'll just plug it in. Right here you can see there's a button called Add Link to Folder. So we're just going to click on it. It brings up this new dialog box and this is where we can add a drive. We could click here on the On My iPad and we could add any one of these shared folders. We could share our iMovie folder, the GoPro folder, but what we want to do is add our Samsung drive here. So we can just click on it. You can see here we could just leave that whole drive selected and hit Done. That would add all the directories on this drive to the locations there. I'm just going to hit this Footage button. We'll hit done and you can see here we now have a shortcut to the footage folder. At any given time if you've added a bunch of folders that you don't want anymore all you have to do is hold down on that folder. You can see now it says remove. We just click remove and there we go. So another nice feature that they've included here say we have our drive unplugged but let's go back to the files location. You can see here there's a folder called Downloaded Media. So anything we've downloaded from our external drives is going to be located in this Downloaded Media. So it's a nice quick way to access your files when your drive's unplugged. Now if you want to delete those files off your iPad permanently, what we're going to do is go into our Files app. We're going to make sure we have On My iPad selected. We're going to go into the LumaFusion folder. We're then going to go into Library Media. And you can see this folder here called Files EXT. If we go into it, there are the original files. So we can then select them hit delete. You can see if we go back up to the LumaFusion folder and we'll refresh it, you can see they're now gone. So definitely a nice welcome update from LumaFusion. Now I know some people were hoping we could edit right off the drives. I just don't think the performance is there yet to be able to do that. That may come down the road, I'm not sure, but uh, at this point uh, this definitely is a lot easier than how it was before. Now before I go here, just quickly a couple more uh, interesting updates that they've added. They've added blending modes, which is something that a lot of people have been asking for for quite some time, so it's in there now. And basically to access your blending modes, you basically double tap on a clip. You want to make sure you're on your frame and fit. 
And you can see down here we now have blending. And of course it's got a nice variety of blending modes that you can choose from. I'll maybe make another tutorial later on what blending modes are and how they're used. There was also a ton of other new enhancements and fixes. Uh, most notably for myself, a problem that I've had and I'm sure many others have had, it now properly supports dark mode. If you were using dark mode with LumaFusion on your iPad, you probably know some of the buttons were missing, sometimes the text was hard to read. So that's all been fixed now and you can properly use dark mode without any issues. Well folks, that's basically it for my video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you found some value in it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.